Hello friends! I'm here today to share with you all of the books I read in the month of December. Quite a bit of a list, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first book I have to share with you is something that I listened to on audio, and that was Christmas on Point by Samantha Chase. This was just a short Christmas time novella, and I ended up giving it three stars. This is about a woman who is a waitress, but has dreams of opening her own dance studio. And she's kind of had a crush on this guy who doesn't really interact a lot with people in the town. But due to a tragic accident, he gets custody of his niece, and his niece wants to take dance classes. The main character becomes the little girl's dance teacher and kind of helps out the uncle with getting her adjusted into life in a new town. This one was good. I did enjoy it. It was just too short. Uh, it was a very... It's very insta-lovey because of the length of the novel, or the novella, but it was good. Next I have to share with you Chasing Christmas Eve by Jill Shalvis. This is some number in the Heartbreaker Bay series, I don't know. And this one, our main character's name is Colby, and she is a writer from New York City. And due to, like, family pressure and kind of having a crush on her, was her agent or her editor or somebody, she ends up running away from New York right before Christmas and ends up in San Francisco and meets Spence who is the owner of the little community apartment building that the Heartbreaker Bay series takes place in. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I did really like it. It's just there were other couples who I've read their books before who I was more interested in seeing what was going on with them and there was kind of a build up to a future couple and I was just more interested in them. I wasn't really into Spence and Colby that much, but I did overall really enjoy the story. The next book I have to share with you I listened to on audio and that was Some Girls Bite by Chloe Neal. This is book one in the Chicago Land Vampire series and I ended up giving this one four stars. I did really enjoy it. I just I think this is such a long series that I didn't really get a lot of romance which was, there was kind of a build up to a romance and I can see it like see what's gonna happen in like the next coming up books and I'm excited for that but this one was just it was good but it was okay I don't know how to describe it with it yeah I needed the romance to actually be more into this book. Next I completed the Winston Brothers series and I read Beard Necessities by Penny Reed. I ended up giving this one five stars. This is Billy and Claire, Scarlet, whatever you want to call her. This is their final official book, and I love these characters to pieces. I love Billy and Scarlet, Claire, whatever you want to call her. I love the Winston brothers, all of them. It was so nice to see them all together in this one. I think this was the perfect ending to a series that I am sad to see go. Next was Burn For Me by Alona Andrews. This is book one in the Hidden Legacy series. I ended up giving this one four stars. This is about Nevada, who is a private investigator in a world where kind of supernatural abilities are known and accepted. <clears throat> but she hides hers because it's, it's, sometimes it's easy to get taken advantage of when you have certain powers. She and her family run a private investigative, private investigating company and the like big city company that owns them sends her on a mission to find somebody with the supernatural powers. This is, yeah, I don't know how to describe it exactly. Anyway, she ends up getting help from this other guy who's looking for the same person she's looking for. And, whew, there was some chemistry. Oh, was there chemistry. I'm super excited to continue on with this series and get to a little bit more of an actual romance. Next, I listened to the audiobook for Perfect Rhythm by Jay? Jai? I'm not sure how to pronounce this author's name. I ended up giving this one four stars. This is about a female, I believe she was a pop star. I'm not sure what genre exactly it was, I don't remember, but she was a famous singer and she is kind of feeling burnt out and everything and she goes home because she finds out her dad has had a heart attack or a stroke or medical something. Anyway, she goes home and she falls in love with his nurse, who is actually an asexual woman. Next we went downhill. A lot. And I read Forever Pupped by Helena Hunting and I'm gonna give this one like one and a half, two stars. <sighs> I'm done with the Pucked series. I'm done with it. I hauled it all and I think this is book four. There was, there's been three 
couple, three couples have had their own book, and then this is the couple from book one, and they're like wedding preparations, and I'm just done with the Puck series. I'm done. It's not for me. I can't take it anymore. Next I read The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry. I ended up giving this one five stars. And I loved this book so much. This is about Graham and Lucy who meet at a funeral. Lucy is a florist and she ends up bringing flowers to Graham's father's funeral. <clears throat> and finding out that Graham is the husband of Lucy's very pregnant sister who she is estranged from. Uh, her sister always seems to have some kind of issue with her, so they just don't speak. And then, after giving birth prematurely, her sister runs away. And Graham... Did he ever actually ask for help? Or I don't think he ever actually asked her for help. I think Lucy just volunteered her help, since this was her little niece. And over the course of, I think, about a year taking care of, <clears throat> helping Graham take care of the baby, they fall in love. And this, oh, this book was so heartbreaking. So heartbreaking. Brittany C. Cherry can just, like, break your heart and then sew it all back up together. And I, I adored this book. I adored it. Next, I read Bound by Honor by Cora Riley. I ended up giving this one, I wrote down four stars, but I think I would move it down to a three, actually. This is a mafia romance, and it starts off, I think the main character was like 15 or 16 when it starts off, and she finds out that she has been given to a, the, like, mafia boss's son uh, in New York City. She's from Chicago. And then we jump forward to her 18th birthday and the wedding is taking place. And this one was okay. I'd... I was enjoying it, but there was this whole like cheating thing. And I'm not really about that, but it didn't... It didn't have as much of an effect on me in this book because I didn't really feel like there they were together when it happened, even though they were married. Um, I do appreciate that he didn't try to consummate their marriage when she was like, nope, not about this, that would be rape, and he was like, okay, no, we're not doing that then. I appreciate that. He was kind of pushy. I don't know. There was, just, like, there was just some things that I weren't quite, wasn't quite there for, and I have not decided if I'm gonna continue on with this series or not. Next, I read Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kimmer. This is another five-star read for me. I uh, absolutely adored this book. This is a YA book about Juliet, whose mother has passed away, and she goes to her mother's grave and leaves letters, because that's how her and her mother, who traveled for work, communicated when she was alive. One day she gets a reply back on one of her letters, and that actually came from Declan. He is doing community service, uh, mowing the cemetery where the grave is. And they don't get along in real life. Um, they're very, this is a YA book, so it's kind of like, they're very different stereotypes in high school, so they don't talk to each other. But they end up finding common ground in the loss of someone that they love. And just this book was, is so good. Highly, highly recommend. Next for the Kindle Unlimited Weekend Readathon, I read Landon and Shay Part 1 and Part 2. Stories like these, I rate them separate, rate them and count them as separate reads, but the rating comes from the overarching story because I don't think you can read part one without reading part two or vice versa. So overall, I give the Landon and Shay story four stars. I did enjoy this, but not as much as I enjoyed like Eleanor and Grey or The Gravity of Us. I felt like it was, uh, with it being two parts, there was just so much that happened so much that happened and I just I kind of lost my interest there in the middle a little bit but it was really good and I don't want that to like deter anybody from picking it up. I hi still highly recommend it. Also for the Weekend Readathon I ended up reading Girl in Love and Boy in Love by Jay Crownover and Rebecca Yeros. This is again one where I count them as separate reads but overall I think the story is more complete if you read both of them so I think you so I think you really need to read both of them. My rating for both of them together is a four star read. Girl in Love is about Langley who is 
being forced to be at her stepsister's wedding to her ex-boyfriend. And uh, Langley decides that she is going to go to the local military, like, hangout bar and find a guy and pay him to be her date to the wedding. She ends up picking a bad guy to pick and ends up getting saved by Iker. I think it's how we were going to pronounce, we're pronouncing his name. I don't know. Anyway, they pretend to date for the wedding, like, week of festivities. And throughout that week, actually fall in love. But after the wedding, the next day, he ends up leaving her in the hotel room because he is getting deployed for nine months. And then in Boy in Love is when he's returned and is trying to win her back. And I love this so much. I love Jay Crownover and I love Rebecca Yeros. And Rebecca Yeros is a military wife, so she does military romances, like, top form. Because she's, she's not only accurate with it, she's got this way of storytelling that is... Like, it comes... Like, it, like when I read one of her stories, I know that it's accurate, I can feel that it's, I can feel how this character in the book feels. Anyway, that's my Rebecca Yeros love. So those are the books that I ended my year on. I had a great reading month, uh, a great reading year. My 2019 review video will be coming up later this week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!